Mission report, 28th of March, 2021. Yeah, so as usual, as we always start, what did you think of the episode? Uh, I, I really, really liked more of the... We're getting to see more of the direction that, like, sort of the show is going overall in this one. I feel like, um, uh, definitely more so than, uh, One Division, this is one of the series that has, sort of, like, feels more like a movie in multiple parts in terms of how it's structured, how it's sort of put together. And, um, uh, that's something that I feel like in the, f- in the first episode, it's like, you know, when they had the big sort of like, opening set piece and then before going into the rest of it it's sort of like um it's a great example of like the the pace of the show as well that i remember about right before the end credits came up i I was sort of thinking all right yeah okay we're getting into like sort of the into the main body of the story here you know we're probably only like halfway through the episode and then Mm. it's like and so that, that sort of happened to me this time because I was like, oh, cool, they're actually going to go to Z- see Zero and stuff. And then it went to black, and I was like, no, it's just yeah. it's going to cut away and continue, right? And then end of the episode, I was like, no, like <laughs> that feels so mean to do that. But at the same time, it was like, that's like how good the pacing is. Like, it makes you feel like we're going into the next part of the story, but then the episode ends, and it's like, oh, of course, it's a TV show. I have to remember that. Yeah, and again, like you said, it definitely feels a lot like a film more than One Division did. One Division definitely has that feel of like a sitcom or just even just a normal TV show. But um, this definitely it's, has. Oh, sorry, One Division. Sorry. One Division benefits from that sort of format mm-hmm. on the meta level of because it's because it's a show about TV shows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> having it be structured like a TV show is you know got to be part of it. But yeah, it's like I reckon. Um, if you were to if you were to binge watch One Division, it would feel like a series. If you were to binge watch Falcon Winter Soldier, it would it would feel like something like Zack Snyder's Justice League. It just feel like a big long mm. film with you know it's sort of looking at the way the different story beats go and like sort of thinking about it from that perspective. As I was thinking, so like yeah, these these first two episodes do feel like like the first third of the so like the average so like uh, Marvel film mm. or something just each of them go for 50 minutes and mm. then it's sort of like that is some, something that you really sort of got to see a lot in the first episode but then even more so in this one of like the placement of the set pieces and like the plot development of the plot is exactly the same as in one of the movies just there's all this extra room for these quiet moments and character development in between and so i reckon this is probably maybe more so than than one division kind of proving like this is really like this is the potential of these mini series and this is what you can do not that there wasn't a lot of like really new stuff in one division but i mean the, the whole concept of the mini series as as mini series as like a film in multiple parts spread out over 6 weeks rather than just in 2 to 3 hours and in like one session at a cinema you know mm, yeah. it's sort of like this is really showing the like what make what's sort of what's new in quotes about these rather than just being a traditional sort of series like one division and like um she hulk and i believe well i mean we'll see going ahead Mm -hmm. but like what some of the other shows will be like but yeah i um yeah pace is one of my favorite things in like sort of production wise aspects of the show it's Mm, like definitely yeah yeah. isaiah Mm, you called it i honestly didn't think it would happen because like I don't know. I know you said that on the cast it was possible that it could be, but at the same time I was like, oh, I'm not really sure. Like that would be such a awesome thing to do, but they did it, and I was just like so excited about it. Because I was thinking, it's like it's just one of those questions of like, are they gonna go there? Are they that mm. bold to like sort of to like you know? Are they not going to pull the punches and like do that kind of story here? Yeah and and they did and it's and also like even just from the small performance like from that one scene like carl umbley is he's an amazing actor been, amazing i remember yeah he's um not in every episode but he's in most of um the i think it's the third season of supergirl when he plays oh, okay. um uh john jones's fa- um father and that and it's just it's really really amazing performance he has like all the way through the story he plays this really really tragic figure and um i remember after watching that i was like yeah wow this guy he's an amazing actor and it's like uh, early on when i saw like when i saw that he was going to be in the show 
I thought, oh, that's just like a cool little bit of like sort of legacy casting, like they do in a lot of the CWDC shows. Because mm. in the Justice League animated series, he played Martian Manhunter. Oh. And so I thought, oh, that's cool having him play Martian Manhunter's dad mm. in the series then. But it's like, damn, he gave an amazing performance, you know, with that character. And then even like just in this, like just just having one scene. Yeah, in the already show. he's he like amazing. The tension's high. You can already yeah. tell. Like, obviously, like again, like I've seen that's the thing. Like on Tumblr, there's a lot of talks about, you know, the topic of racism being in this mm. show. And also just the fact that they're including such a pivotal character, but also someone that represents a lot of black history and a lot of very dark stuff that comes from black history as well because even someone was saying that i think it's the tusk g science yeah the tusk experiments, the that tusk G experiments. yeah mm. um it's just i understand the... the character of as i was um uh inspired by those and like mm, when they, yeah. they they wrote him as like sort of as an analogy for that so yeah, yeah. and again that's just such a a big move and i just saw a lot of people very emotional about it saying like you know we we didn't expect this like this is like incredible that they're putting their foot down and actually talking about this sort of stuff because in all honesty in a lot of material they never really speak about it it's only touched upon very lightly and that's it so the fact that they're delving into a character that's sort of inspired by those events it's a really big move from marvel and it's it's good to see that it's happening finally um but yeah it's also just like i cannot wait to have more scenes with isaiah because again the emotional tension's already there and you can, oh, the whole thing, like Anthony, like even in that whole scene when, when he didn't even say a word, you could just see like all these emotions just rushing through him. It's just so good. And the scene after that as well was really good, but I can't wait to have more scenes with Isaiah the most. Like that was just so, so good. And like, just to point out as well, like just um, speaking about uh, what's what, um, um, uh, theories and predictions for the show. Mm, yeah. um, previously it's like yeah um the um i was i was looking at the credits but then um, um after the episode and reading the whole cast and like an idiot i decided to like i thought <laughs> oh i'm just gonna look at all the actors names i don't need to see the characters <laughs> names and then like sort of realizing that yeah i only saw it later on twitter people saying yeah that was definitely that was eli bradley was um there uh, I spoke about you, yeah. to you after the episode i was trying to remember his name i was like what is it i get that nah. <laughs> didn't see the actor's name that's right yeah um uh elijah bradley he's played yeah that's right um he's played by elijah richardson and because oh. i remember it was um uh i think i think that was um there was like an instagram post from him a few months ago or something that may have kind of hinted at having a role in the series and then there's lots of people <laughs> thinking is he going to be Eli Bradley? People saying you just think that because his name's Eli and he's black. I mean, <laughs> actually, <laughs> but then, but I mean, like, yeah, with Carl Umbley, like, sort of supposedly playing as I as well. Mm. So like, ah, and then it's, okay, it's possible. And but yeah, Eli is he's um as I as grandson or ah, yeah. sometimes his son in like some different yeah. That's why I got confused. I was like, is it his son yeah. or grandson? Yeah. That's why I kept getting confused with that. But yeah, and he alongside with um with um uh tommy and billy maximoff and mm -hmm. cassie lang is one of the founding members of the young avengers team it's it, it, it's confirmed at this point with yeah, i'm not much. even saying it. it's like okay yeah it like another year and they're gonna be like saying there's a show or something coming out yeah. about them uh john walker mm. the scene like yeah there's um first of all amazing performance from so white he's like so good is because uh, I've seen like before prior to the show starting and then even like after the first episode I've seen lots of people speculating about like what kind of characterization they're going to go with lots mm. of people thinking um of Homelander from yeah. the boys as like that sort of the direction I'm going to go I think later on in the season I think we will go in that direction but I'm actually really impressed with like how they how they're sort of presenting him in this sort of like nuanced but not like um he's not like just outright i am a complete psychopath oh, and yeah. a bad guy but it's sort of as they were pointing out he's as i saw someone say he's kind of he's charming he's likable but he's just so insufferable exactly as well. yeah he's sort of like you get the idea that there's this sort of he's got like a little bit of rage 
sort mm. of like yeah. underneath them. Especially sort of because like, at yeah. the beginning, like that small prologue sort of thing at the beginning of the episode, um, I can't remember what the friend's name was, but he was saying like, you can't punch your way out of situations anymore. So I was like, that yeah. means like, it's great writing to put that line in. Cause it obviously means that he's sort of a bit of a troublemaker, even though he has all this great like awards and stuff for doing all the stuff he did. He has a bad track record of, you know, maybe getting into fights who knows what for but i'm guessing we're going to see that sort of like short temperedness come out a lot more during the rest of the series mitch and i were talking about it quite a bit of um we were theorizing about whether he's juiced up on any kind of like super soldier serum at the um at mm. the moment and we're thinking about it and like sort of uh, it was like from like the start of the episode we're sort of thinking that and then the episode think yeah the he isn't yet there's going to be something where like when he's sort of like when it comes to a big proper fight against mm. the Flag Smashers, who are all super soldiers, he'll probably get really, really, like, sort of, you know, like, easily defeated by them, maybe oh, um, yeah. pretty injured as well, and then we'll think that I need to, he, he I need to, to get powered serum. up. I need to, like, yeah. yeah. And then probably the same serum that they'd taken as well yeah. from the Power Broker, who gave him his powers in the comics. Also. Yeah, so it's a good, it's a good connection. But, but also, like, it's sort of that thing going back to the original first movie of Captain America. It's sort of what's his name, Doctor Doctor Eskin. Yes, it's sort of like what he says as well. Like, give, give. What's what's a quote? It's such a good quote. It's about like giving a like a man who wants power or something like too much, and then he becomes like yeah it's real. i'm saying it really badly but he says it's, it so well i i, I forget the exact quote too but i know it's the whole thing about how the i i mean and i guess we'll see it with with this and it's like it's, it was a different serum but i imagine it had like it was this same sort of little principle about it that was the effect with um blonsky for instance mm. it was like even though this is a probably a totally different serum it's like i still reckon it's like has the same effect that erskine described of it it amplifies everything. It amplifies yeah. all of like your sort of personal attributes and like given to a good man, it also like amplifies goodness given to given to a bad guy, it mm. increased their bad yeah. the, like oh. rage and the madness yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. And then you definitely kind of see that with um with Blonsky. Like it kind mm. of yeah, turned him into like a, a monster and uh uh like sort of an ultimate predator, so yeah. to speak, when that's what he was trying to be. And then I, I was thinking yeah like right off the bat with walker it's like he is definitely like sort of he is sort of keeping his emotions in check his like sort of the the rage and the what's the word the um the sort of like the sort of stress of trying to be better mm. and like sort of being like you know that sort of thing he is kind of keeping that in, in check but mm. If he takes the serum, that's going to exacerbate it. That's going oh, to yeah, like definitely. sort of let let out this monstrous side of him. Yeah. That he'll sort of like ha really have a lot of trouble controlling. But yeah. There's um one bit. It's sort of like um this could be a bit bit of a spoiler, but it might be something mm -hmm. interesting to um speculate about. There's um this um set footage from I think in Prague mm -hmm. when they were filming there back in whenever it was, um of um. It's um, a bit where it was sort of one of the first times that people had seen sort of like um, um, uh, Wyatt as like Walker in action Ooh. on set. This one little bit that I think if if this is like in the ne in the next step in like maybe not the next episode, maybe like episode four or five. I thought yeah, I'm talking about like how also I saw like um, and talking about like sort of the topic of like sort of racism and oppression that mm. they're like sort of going in the series. I thought. If this scene state is what everybody thinks it is from like sort of what it look like from afar with like you know husband shots like that is going to be like some of the most like sort of like intense symbolism in like a sort of sequence that I definitely oh, would have seen now I'm excited. From the whole series. Ah! And it's um yeah I don't think I'll say what it is because if like it might it might have been I know they said there was a couple of there may have been one or two things from the show that were shot, but they decided to cut because of, they said they didn't elaborate on it, but they said because of some of the different sort of events of 2020, uh, they cut a couple of things here and there. That's fair and enough. And it's speculated as to like, a lot of people think is that like to do with 
Black Lives Matter and like sort of mm. George Floyd is that like was there anything that was sort of too much you know of like and sort of uh. this, this is just like it, this is just excessive this is just like sort of you it's know too much this is or is or there's also other speculation that there may have been some kind of plot line about a virus being released or something it could be to do with that oh, and okay. so but I guess we'll find out yeah. going ahead but yeah this scene is like and this is also a scene that when just from it was like it's only like just like it's one it's like sort of like just off in the distance from like someone was like filming it from the top of a building <laughs> and it's sort of like it's like this is something as well though made a lot of people think gee are they going to go that hard with the violence mm-hmm. in the show Ooh. and like sort of saying that because they said that if like they said this is like it, it's like you know it's sort of because like he's sort of pulling the punches as it were of like because it's you know like it's just like you know, you know stunt performance you know, yeah. it's like they would probably go in to do inserts with some vfx afterwards mm. that sort of thing but like if he's doing what everybody thinks he's doing it in that shot then there's like people thinking is this show gonna have an ma rating and Shit. even though it didn't it's like it's still pretty hard violence though yeah compared i'd to say the, the movies yeah and then it's like, yeah, um, I think it's in the Netherlands. Yeah, the show was like, it's the first time it's been rated, uh, an MCU project's been rated like above the sort of PG-13 oh. or M yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. rating. Um, but then it's like, yeah, I reckon, I think we're going to get pretty brutal in, in the show. This guy's like, not that it isn't already, but I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, I'll, 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 I do have all these different things to talk about about that sort of no, Jesus. Wait. <laughs> uh, hold on. I swear to God, one day I'm actually gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> um, flag, sma- flag smashes. Mm, of, um, yes. It's really interesting getting to see a lot more of them in mm-hmm. this episode. Getting to see more of like their kind of like their side of everything, seeing like sort of everything that's going on. There's a tweet I saw earlier. Someone said, "Let me just find it." Said, "Um, oh, <laughs> they deleted the tweet, obviously." But oh, was, damn it. Uh, <laughs> There's um uh somebody talking about how I said it's like what so so why root against these people? It's like they're like you know that it's like so far their motivation and like what they're trying to do is they're trying to redistribute medical supplies to people mm-hmm. in need and they want to like sort of try and unify the world or something. It's like but that sounds good. And then um was film point, pointing out but that's the point is like. Mm you don't have any reason to root against them. And like mm. within the context of the show as well, it's like as Sam and Bucky all kind of learn, learn more and like even as they were talking about in the most recent episode, you know, it's sort of they're they're the people that they're point that they're that they're pointed at and told to like sort of go after mm. because, you know, they're seen as enemies or terrorists, but then it's like they're good people you know yeah, it's like they seem to be doing like, good they haven't really hurt anyone yeah even yeah. when i was talking about it in my video i found it really hard to see them as like enemies yeah i was like they're doing a good thing and you know obviously they were used to the life they had during the blip and things were very different during that time it must have been a lot easier because there's more resources to go around there is less people to look after and obviously they did have to change stuff but the world is in even more disarray than it was when things were normal or even during the blip. So there are more people who are, um, they don't have homes. To make, to make an analogy, there's, um, uh, there's, um, there's no new, no- there's, there, um, there's a new, there's a new normal mm. after the blip, you know? Yeah. It's like, and lots of people have been, um, pointing out through last year, like all the different, all the sort of the, all the stories they're getting to explore now in the MCU and like the sort of post blip world is like, well, gee, right after we've had a sort of blip of our own, technically, yeah, that's true. and like seeing all these like the different similarities come up of, of like, I mean, tons of different things are affected by COVID. Lots of things are sort of like slowly coming back to normal. There's a whole bunch of other things that are kind of just not going to be normal anymore, mm. and that's something that would be the case, like triply so, even if, if if that um let alone, if that you know even further with um with the blip. And then, so it's like, that's the part of, I imagine it's like, um, it's also like, and what we're told about the flag smashes in the first episode is like, well, how much of that is just like, you know, what someone who's being sent after them to try and take them down would, mm-hmm. would be, would be told, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, what if their goals, 
could be like sort of more, uh, more to do of like, you know, it's just everything was going on during the blip. Everything now is like sort of there's all these people that have been displaced by it, all these people that are sort of, you know, um, exempt from healthcare and like sort of financial yeah. um, um, support because of it. And then they seem to be helping those people out. And then as we, as we saw, that's not just hyperbole on their part. It's like, there's like probably like, you know, there's just, they just go along to this random place. And this guy says, you know, don't worry. Like, yeah, anywhere you go, there'll be people to help mm. you because like, you know, you yeah, have people sort of like believe and support this sort of cause. Mm. I saw one person theorizing about the idea. They said, those medical supplies, how do we know that the medical, the medical supplies that they talked mm. about wasn't actually more super soldier serum? That's true well, like, as well, yeah. And I think, I reckon, I reckon it's, it's sort of in, in a lot of the ways as they've done with the show so far, I reckon they're definitely going to turn out to be the good guys in quotes mm. by, so like by the end of the story, like more of the good guys than, than everybody bad, else involved. Yeah. But there is, I reckon there is still going to be something going on with them, something a little bit, mm. you know, a little bit gray, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but then, um, uh, I know that there was um, so somebody po um, pointing out how it was like, if, aside from the similarity of being led by Aaron Kellyman, as like they said, there's actually quite a lot of similarities to the Cloud Riders in Solo. Oh, of, like, yeah. They're this kind of like sort of, yeah, they're this group that's going around sort of stealing supplies and stuff. They all wear masks and, you know, we kind of think they're the bad guys at the mm. start and then actually turns out they're doing all this because they're going up against this other threat. Yeah. And I reckon, I, I wonder if that'll be part of the thing if we'll learn about, I mean, like maybe because, because my theory and my assumption of how it goes is they're all former test subjects from the power breaker. Who is probably, ah. probably someone who in like in the same sort of like Obadiah Stain kind of mm. uh, what's the word um, niche is somebody who probably has a contract with the U.S. government to like sort of research super soldier serum and stuff, mm. but at the same time is selling it on the black market. Yeah, and sort of then, doing experiments with it. Yeah, and I imagine much like the super soldier. Um, experiments that would have been conducted after Erskine's ones on Steve yeah. and Oscar after Erskine's formula was lost with Steve yeah. being lost in the Arctic Ocean all of the experiments they would have conducted that would have led to Isaiah mm. and then so like um bearing the similarities to the Tuskegee ex um, experiments that's probably I imagine that same sort of thing as what Power Broker has been doing yeah. in the present probably maybe during the blip or maybe shortly before I don't know mm. maybe they all got out during the blip and then, and um, who knows, maybe even the the department or laboratory or wherever that the power broker comes from is the same one that was researching the super soldier serum after Cap went away. Ooh, and that's yeah. where Isaiah got his um, serum from as well mm. from back then. But yeah, my theory is that all of them are escaped super soldier prototypes that have like, they're... First of all, trying to help everybody. Second of all, trying to like sort of get back at the power broker, even though he's got far more resources at his disposal and like people he's sending out after them. What they're going to try and do is try and expose him and expose everything that's going on. Mm. Stuff's going to happen when they're going to kind of find out that all right, that's the actual sort of like that's who the real kind of villain that's is the real here. Villain who's, yeah. There's like all this sort of stuff going on. Walker in trying to bring down the um the the flag smashers will mm. he'll go to power broker and get juiced up yeah to try and take them down that's kind of the direction i'm thinking heading I, and it's it's interesting that i'd say um where is it it's like i i, I it's i've seen the thing of like sort of prior to the show starting there's lots of people's like saying different things of either either this is a show where Compared to One Division, it's like this isn't going to be one of those sort of like theorize and speculate all the time, week in week out sort of shows. And mm. like, yeah, I would sort of say it's not. But then it, um, there's other people saying at the same time, the, the, the even unlike One Division, it's like you would know yeah, people watching this will know far less of like sort of where it's going to go. And we'll have mm, far exactly. more speculation of where it's going to go. And yeah, that's kind of true as well. It's like in both ways, it's sort of it's one to speculate more about and less about in different ways. But yeah. it's sort of, I it's um. 
yeah, to make the simplest comparison, one division is like it kind of had like a clear sort of rough sort of end point of like, yeah, I kind of can guess in what kind of direction this is going. You know, mm -hmm. we know so like from early on in the show, you know that okay, at some point the 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 um uh the hex is going to mm -hmm. collapse. Wonderful. At some point Wanda's going to properly sort of become the Scarlet Witch. At some point, you know, someone is going to reveal themselves, be it Agatha or, you know, or whoever. And mm -hmm. it's Haywood and everybody else are going to get involved with everything. Falcon with a soldier, I don't really know. I've got like a That's couple of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a couple of ideas about what'll happen through like episodes four and five, mm. but I don't know what like the actual what the end game of it's going to be yeah and, i yeah. think my only big theory was isaiah because i was like if they go there they're going there and that's a big big step but other than that i was like oh yeah zemo's there these this group of the flag smashers are there i don't really know too much about them so yeah i was just more like i'm open to be surprised so and then you spoke about john walker i don't know too much about him either so i was like oh yeah i'm also open to finding out more stuff about him too I think it's, um, as, because I know Let's Bill have been making the comparisons to The Winter Soldier and saying how yeah. if there's like any other Marvel film that's like, it's the Winter, um, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. And mm. I'll definitely agree. First of all, it's one of my favorite, um, one of my Marvel films as well. Films, yeah. And, um, it's, um, I was thinking, yeah, definitely about that. It's just sort of like, like going into that with like the marketing of it and like sort of everything else. Like, okay, yeah, we got, we know the general gist of sort of what's happening. It's about, mm cap fighting against bucky and like whoever you know it's like bucky's working with but it's sort of it's really like one of those films that going into it, it's only about halfway through that you properly realize like the true extent of everything that's yeah, going there's on more, and, like, there's more there's more to it yeah mm. and i think um i reckon yeah it's definitely the same thing with falcon winter soldier it's like yeah we know to like the rough gist of what it's going to be about we've seen like sort of some of that so far we're not up to the point in the show yet where they properly reveal everything that's going on here yeah and um yeah i'm eagerly awaiting that moment maybe it'll Same be here. maybe it'll be at the end of next week at the mm. what would be the midpoint of the series already and, yeah <laughs> but um but yeah i think i reckon there'll definitely be some twists and turns mm, going ahead. definitely I definitely wanted to speak about Anthony and Seb's amazing acting in this episode. Let's start off, first of all, with the beginning where Bucky was just sitting watching the TV. My heart yeah. broke just watching him. Because again, I've said it before, Seb is so good at acting without words. And he's just very, ex ex like, he's very good with expression or with his eyes showing the emotion. And there's another scene I'll talk about later with his eyes. But in that moment, especially when you can hear John's voice and saying, like, you know, I look to him as a brother and stuff and all that, all that stuff. And I was like, no, the man who thinks of him as his brother is Bucky or even Sam. So it was like such a, I don't know, it really broke my heart watching Bucky sort of sitting there and just being so upset over this whole thing. It was, um, it's, it's also, but it's, it was one thing I remember thinking of during that scene of like, it's thing about sort of like, you know, um, um, heartbreaking it is, um, with Bucky, you know, like watching that. But then I was thinking, well, it's, as well, it's actually like, um, it was a really interesting sort of, um, um, just like sort of just thing to think about that. Um, and I realized what it was that it's sort of like, that was like had also gotten me to like thinking about the whole sort of thing is this one scene in uh zach's justice league in <laughs> for anybody that hasn't seen it it's not much of a spoiler uh, it's the bit... so good yeah. and we'll talk about it during yeah. the week i promise yeah. we're having a very as, very long video about it <laughs> as um uh the bit when when martha and lois are talking and there's the line she says how so there's all these people that like sort of felt such a connection to to superman and like sort of you know felt like they knew him personally but like says like i you and me are two of the few people that really like actually knew him and then i could see a lot of similarities to like to that in this sort of sequence as well of like it's like yeah it's kind of it's it's hypocritical coming from walker as this guy standing there and like in steve's clothes with steve's shield mm while steve's best friend is like sort of sitting there watching it but it's like thinking 
Well, yeah, he would think like that. And, like, there's lots of people that would probably think like that around, yeah, like, in the Marvel Universe. So. They, like, would see, would see Captain America as, you know, as a friend or an mm. ally. And, like, that's just, that's, that's just sort of, like, part of the way it goes with, like, sort of when you're that famous and that influential mm. on, like, sort of so many people. Like, that's a part like, of the job. Yeah. It's, like, there's, like, any number of people that Steve would have had a massive impact on personally but only a handful of them had just as much back mm. and then that's sort of like it's like a yeah really really great moment of like sort of summing up a lot of like it's not as like sort of clear-cut sort of like you know good and bad sort of approach in this um the storytelling is that it's like the whole sequence of walker and bucky is like i could see it from both of their sides of like i could see that Walker really, like, he really idolizes Steve. Oh, like, yeah. you could tell that. And, like, he's sort of someone that he, like, he really, really does sort of, like, look up to. And, like, so the whole previous sequence is, like, he's sort of kind of dreading going out there and thinking, like, you know, it's like, can I, can I really live up to him? You know, am mm. I good enough? You know, that kind of, that kind of, like, performance mm. stress, something will probably lead to, you know, him taking Super Soldier Serum later on. <laughs> but then at the same time, seeing it from like sort of Bucky's side you know like sort of you know how disrespectful that could sound you know what he was saying yeah but it's like yeah I really really like the way the whole way that scene was done of like it's sort of again it's like yeah sort of like the the beautiful dichotomy of the character of Walker that's like I get it I get where he's coming from and he seems like a likable guy. I get his struggles, but like the way he's affecting other people with them, you know, yeah. the way that he's sort of like, you know, it's like, it's it's brilliant. It's it's just, so like, yeah, but um, but yeah, uh, yeah. I was also gonna say, like, especially because you and I spoke about this when we did the reaction video to the trailer. Um, symbols and sort of the legacy sort of stuff is coming more into play especially in this episode especially with Bucky you know like he he wants a legacy for Steve and he like especially with the amazing counseling scene that we had in this episode you know he wants a legacy for Steve and even though he wasn't chosen to take the shield he wants Sam to live on that legacy um and in but I guess like and especially people on Tumblr were speaking about this a lot and I don't think Bucky really understands the extent of why um, Sam didn't take up the shield in terms of, you know, being a black man. Does America really want a black man to represent America? But also just even that that scene with the cops. You know, this is something that has been, you know, happening a lot in terms of the cops and the black community. And it's, I was really, again, shocked that they put that scene in. But again, it's sort of that thing, like, sort of switching over to what happened with Sam. If Sam wasn't a superhero and if Bucky wasn't there, he either would have gotten shot or he would have been taken to prison. Yeah. So it was just like, like the, that sort of like switch of it, like because he was a superhero, like that sort of saved him from the usual yeah. like racist, like derogatory behavior that sort of comes from the police at times. So it was pretty intense, especially for me to sort of watch that scene and see it unfold that way and just seeing like the the difference and sort of like that that help from being a superhero sort of step in but I think yeah that's the thing I don't think Bucky really understands not doesn't understand but he doesn't understand what Sam has had to live through as a black man and have to be careful with everything that he does in terms of racism Mm. and receiving that sort of like um backlash for maybe even if he ever did step into the shoes of Captain America like I can't imagine what, if they do it in the show, it would be interesting to see what happens. But if he did, I would be, I would like to see like that sort of like backlash from it and see like how that, how even Bucky would see it. And then he'll be able to understand why Sam didn't take it up in the first place. Um, But the other, (laughs) the really sad thing though, was with the counseling session. And this is again, where Seb really again, nails it on the head with how good he is at acting when he was saying, you know, like if, Steve was wrong about you being the next Captain America, then he was always wrong about me being a better man than just the Winter Soldier and then being his best friend. Like, and it took me back to that scene in Civil War where, you know, um, Steve was like, it was worth it. Um, And then Bucky was like, was it really though? Was it really worth the cost of sacrificing your friends and then us leaving them behind? 
so it yeah it just it is a big question though it's like was it worth it so yeah it was yeah it's so good um oh that's right yeah um something i saw someone on reddit talking about with um um as i had that um i hadn't seen i hadn't thought of at the time and hadn't seen that i mean people bring up as i said um so he's like the sort of like the forgotten super soldier, so like the forgotten captain america and mm. then putting out like the little extra bit of sort of symbolism and analogy there that having it that he fought in the korean war as well which is like of, oh yeah like said there was world war Two, which was in like sort of for like sort of like in sort of general american history is like sort mm. of that's the one to like we yeah, we can't came in and save the day sort of thing yeah. there's sort of the everything then with the vietnam war later on of like you know it was sort of kind of a, like a sort of national disgrace sort of mm -hmm. like you know both for either the kind of like the more nationalistic side of looking at it as this defeat but then at the same time all these sort of people that were like needlessly slaughtered needlessly mm -hmm. died all those different all the thousands and thousands or millions of young veterans with like sort of ptsd and you know side effects yeah. and different effects and injuries from the war but then the Korean War was in the middle of that. That was between mm -hmm. the two of them. And that's sort of like, that's the one sort of much more like sort of lesser known. It's the thing I know it was like a, um, it was a big deal of like um, a lot of the, there's a lot of animosity between Korean War vets and Vietnam War vets yeah. because it's sort of like, they kind of like, you know, it's sort of like they saw them as sort of taking the spotlight away from their, problems and their issues yeah. and so on but just like said so like just that like just like oh that little connection of that is like yeah the forgotten war is like also there's the one with the forgotten Cap captain captain america yeah. involved in it and also the idea that i that as i nearly took down bucky like yeah. you know and that was and, during his winter soldier days as well yeah and um and early in the winter soldier days too when yeah. like for for one thing, okay, so he might have might might not have been as so like refined in his skills yeah. then, but at the same time, it's like that when he would have been like sort of at the top of his game. Because it would have been because the World War Two is nineteen forties, so it would have been like at least five five ten years after. I can't remember when the Korean War was. So it the must Korean have been... War was nineteen fifty to nineteen fifty three. Oh, okay, so it would because nineteen forty five the war ended, so it would have been five years later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, about like yeah, five, seven years later or so, and yeah, yeah, okay. I uh, I remember thinking at one point as like I thought during that whole sequence, I thought, yeah, we're not gonna have a flashback here. They're just gonna let mm -hmm. the performances to, like stand on their own. But I I wouldn't. I'm be, glad they did though, like, that. They I wouldn't let be it sit. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, and I kind of hope if like maybe later on we might get like a little bit of uh, like sort of because like I want to see I hope it. So. Action. That would be awesome. And like. And also, it's like I mean, we already got one Winter Soldier flashback earlier in the in the season. Thought if we get to see that again and get to see his Iron action, you know, it's like come on, I want to see that. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Like, that would be so cool. Uh, predictions for next week, other than uh, already... well, obviously we're going to see Zemo. Yeah. And I'm wondering how that's going to go. Mm. Um, from I remember from a teaser from I think it was when the Super Bowl ad came out last year. Bucky seems really pissed. Yeah. So he's very eager to get information, not only probably about, um, uh, what was it? What was it that they were going for Zemo for in the first place? Is it just for Bucky um, or? To I find out about the super soldier serum, I think. Oh or, yeah. yeah. So obviously that, but I think Bucky is also eager to find out stuff about himself since Zemo was obsessed with him. Like he's probably eager to find out more information about himself as a person and even as the winter soldier. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out in terms of that. I also wonder how Sam will, well, I guess like we'll see it, but like, I wonder how Sam's going to react in mm. terms of seeing Zemo again. And, you know, obviously he has a lot of transgressions against him still, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see that reaction. Um, I hope we get to see, well, I'm not sure if we'll see him in the next episode, but I want to see Isaiah again very soon, whether it's the next episode or the episode after that. Um, Cause I just want that interaction again between with sam and bucky but i think sam will definitely go and see him again um very soon um so yeah i think that i i'm not really sure what's gonna happen next i think we're gonna see john 
get a little bit more agitated, I guess, more aggression, maybe in the terms of the way he fights, etc. Um, but other than that, I'm not really sure. And I'm just more open to being surprised when it happens. I'm trying to remember. Um, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, just like, yeah. Um, one last thing I remember um, talking about, I think it was last night or the night before. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to Mitch and was like talking about like sort of symbolism in the mm. show this is something that will kind of play into that sort of scene i was talking about from the set footage that we mm. probably not next week maybe the week after or a week after that let's see but um talking about sort of symbolism and i was um sort of thinking about the shield Ooh. and i was like think um, thinking about that self and i thought yeah like while we're talking about like the sort of like you know sort of talking about race and the u.s government and like sort of all these different things and also like sort of thinking about the fact that like the shield's made of vibranium it's made from vibranium that was probably more likely than not stolen from wakanda and like it's like yeah the this this is the shield is like this sort of like emblem of the of the u.s it's like you know paint of the stars and the stripes but it's made out of out of, it's made out of resources that are stolen from africa mm. and it's like well that's a that's some symbolism right oh, there yeah. <laughs> of like <laughs> It's like the shield can the shield basically can sum up like the entire United States as a country. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, and then it's like, but yeah, I'm um I reckon it's sort of like that. It's um yeah something that we've already seen little bits and pieces of. We got even more of it. So like learning about um as I but so like I reckon whether they touch upon that aspect of it or not i know it's like it's something that um, a lot of people have been speculating about leading into the show and that we've definitely seen so far of like what's the like the the weight of the shield it's like it's more than just like the fact that it's it's a gym of captain america and it's yeah, like, like steve's, steve's like, and stuff but yeah. like but like what is like what it's like what's everything else so like behind it and related yeah. to it and it's like i think from the sound of it, I mean, like, and who knows, we might, um, it might be different. So that might be like sort of, um, um, I reckon we still, we didn't have it fully explained. I'm guessing we'll find out with, um, with Isaiah. It's like, I realized that through, um, through recording this, I've been talking about like the idea is that, um, so Erskine created the formula. He was the only person who, um, who knew it. He was the one, Steve. He was then killed. The formula is lost except in Steve's blood. Steve ended up in the ice. And then, all right, no Steve, no formula. And then we know from the Incredible Hulk that there was, you know, different sort of plans to try and recreate the formula mm. after it was lost. I would have, I was assume I was sort of talking as if, as if that sometime after World War II was when they sort of began those experiments that Asaya would have been one of the, um one of the people they experimented on around that time of trying to recreate the formula yeah but then i completely forgotten that yet in the the comics like the original sort of like part of it in the story was that the formula they used on steve had been tested on a bunch of black soldiers first to make sure if it was safe for human use and so and as i was one of them oh and so, shit i thought it was after i it's because I don't know, it could be, or it could have been before. Well, it's they could like, have done I feel like, either one of them. Yeah, yeah, with um, with what they with um, uh, the whole way that sort of Erskine and uh, like everything he was doing was sort of presented in First Avenger. It sounds yeah. sort of more like he is sort of he all of his early tests he did in Germany, like sort of while well, you know, sort of working under the employee of Hydra. Then he um came to the u.s and then sort of like didn't want to use it on anyone else until he found like sort of the perfect person yeah. to use on. he already had it refined basically yeah uh, but unless it was who's to say erskine's was the only super soldier program exactly. there that must was have been going other on. scientists who may have gotten really shitty replicas of it and tried it oh my mm. god so yeah i am it's sort of and that's part of like as i am from um i mean this is only just like what i know from like different reference books here and there mm. But it's like, yeah, part of the whole, um, part of the whole concept of um, talking about like sort of Isaiah's story and like everything going on with him is sort of like the idea of you know when they were writing it was first of all analogy of the sort of the Tuskegee experiments, but then it was also kind of like just for like the more the more general sort of sense of like this sort of 
this kind of brutal and sadistic history, mm. like sort of like hidden. There's like there's the shining exterior of sort of like American history, but then there's like the other there's side the of it side that of nobody it. really yeah. knows about. And that's sort of what it was sort of set up to be an analogy of, of like, yeah, there's Captain America, like sort of, you know, he's like, they had yeah, this. Yeah, it's like Steve and John being I... speaking of hope, yeah. But then, but before all that, there was also all this other stuff, you know? Yeah. And so I, I think, I, I, because I was thinking as well, I thought I, it's part of the reason I thought, you know, like prior to, um, so like him being introduced in the show, I thought, now, like, Carl's not, Carl Lumbly isn't young. Mm. but like if he is if he was if he was like a like sort of like a young soldier around the same time that steve was then you know he would be well over 100 years old and like you know surely he wouldn't be i mean like i think how old is carl because bucky's 106 now yeah yeah and then yeah carl is 69 so like it's like i mean but then i thought he's but then I remembered, I thought, I mean, well, Steve didn't age in the ice, and yeah, Bucky yeah. was, like, sort of, was frozen Constantly on and off. in and out of, yeah. And, like, I, I thought, yeah, I could buy the idea of, like, it's all, like, the aging is kind of slow with, yeah. like, the sort of, you know, with, thanks to the super soldier serum. And I mean, I actually know, we've already seen that, because um, yeah, Steve was, what, like, he would have been about, like, sort of late 30s or so when he mm. went back to live with Peggy and, like, sort of, yeah, and then he came back a super or so. old guy. And then this is like, you know what? He he would have been like, aside from how long he lived in the ice, he would have been like, you know, it still another would have been normal like aging almost. Yeah, an, another almost hundred years old on top of that. Yeah, and he still like he only looks about eighty or something. Yeah, you know. So it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, I, I reckon, yeah, because like as yeah, I was like. Thinking of Carl's age and assuming, yeah, okay, so maybe they're like sort of having a slightly different thing that all of those experiments were done in like the the late the early sixties or something, mm, or you know. Yeah. But it's like, no, I honestly think it, it like could go the whole. This oh, was yeah. before Captain America, kind of, you know. Yeah, thing. I think it it would be interesting because right. I feel like if they did, it could have sh- it could show like the effects on different men like how maybe like for bucky it's different with aging obviously because of the circumstances that he has different for steve and then obviously it'll be different for isaiah so i think it's it'll be good to have variations of how long people can age or like how they look etc so i think it's very interesting with what they did with isaiah so i just hope well they don't need to really explain it too much but I just hope they give a li- little bit more context with it when the time comes to talk about his backstory. Like the whole perspective as well of like, well, yeah, but if he was from, if the, all of those experiments happened before Steve became Captain the Universe, like surely Steve would have known about it. But like, well, uh, people would have covered it up, you know. Oh yeah, have, the government would have, would have covered it up. He wouldn't have been up. told. Even when Bucky found out, you know, he didn't tell Steve because exactly. like, you know, it's like, it's like, yeah, I kind of yeah, man. I kind of don't want you to know that, like, you know, all Steve of this, would have like, been target. heartbroken. Yeah, mm. he really would have like been torn up about it because no matter like he's very respectful for anybody, no matter the color of their skin or religion, blah blah blah. He would have been yeah. so mad. He yeah. would have really, really gone on a rampage. I think that's what would have broken Steve Rogers out of all things. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm sort of well, I mean like. I'm sort of happy that Bucky kept Steve in the dark about it, but at the same time, if Steve ever found out yeah. that Bucky kept that away from him, he mm. had not the same reaction as what Tony had with like with the whole thing with Bucky. But I feel like t- um, Steve would have felt betrayed. Yeah. No way. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, final thoughts. Okay. Uh, again, like what I said, um, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode, and again, like I love. This sort of like spy, like uh, like governmental secret sort of stuff. This is always my favorite genre, so I was like in for it from the get go. Um, and again, I've been I've just been like being surprised. I love it because like again, I was so surprised with Isaiah. I was like, if they do it again, big mm. step for the Marvel universe, and they did it. So I was like, oh yes, like now I just want to see that sort of unravel and see more of it. Um, and again, I'm just again very open to being surprised and mm. i'm just enjoying it i'm here for the ride more yeah than 
with this show, I think I'm just more like open to being surprised and whatever's going to come, I'll just enjoy it. Mm. As I mean, uh, yeah, it's, um, like I said, the sort of WandaVision had like sort of the way everything is going, like you could tell there's going to be like this kind of one sort of particular end point mm. everything is leading to. It's just a matter of what happens there. Yeah. That's same we got everybody speculating. And so there was enough information to sort of suggest something's going to happen here. Yeah. Someone's going to be involved. Who's it going to be? Whereas so this, it's much more kind of open ended. It's more like, yeah, I, yeah, who knows where it's going? We'll yeah. find out. But um, even they were saying the, like, the the director and the writer were saying they're hoping for a season two. So if that's yeah. the case, I was like, fingers crossed because yeah. already I'm enjoying it and I love <laughs> the comedy with um, Bucky and Sam. So I was like, I, I would love to have like a full couple of seasons with these guys because this is fun. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, remember to leave your comments down below if you have any theories for the next episode. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of The Aftermath. One world, one people. One world, one people. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Woo!